Hi, you're at Step. I was trying to catch you like every every single platform, LinkedIn, Instagram, I'm s- whatsoever. <laughs> Network. I'm as well. so sorry. I'm so sorry. Instagram. If you send me a DM, most likely it goes in the hidden messages, which. I barely access because when I open Instagram, I'm posting and my notifications are off. So I don't want to get bombarded because most of the time there's just like a lot of notifications coming in and my focus is the clients yeah. that we're working with. LinkedIn, I never open <laughs> because it's not really my expertise, but like I've created an account there for obvious reasons to be able to connect with people, but I'm really sorry. No problem. Yeah. So that you, whoever doesn't know yet, Farhad is the person who actually makes people go viral on Instagram TikTok primarily right TikTok was always the focus but what we've seen uh, over the last three years is that the same content works on Instagram snapchat spotlight YouTube shorts uh, reels Instagram Facebook reels and so on and so forth like it kind of just works pretty much across all platforms how did that all happen how did you find your passion how did you define your mission like that please when i was uh when i was in school i wanted to become an astronaut and my my interest was always in engineering so i pursued electrical engineering i had to drop out i couldn't afford it i was doing really bad in math physics was my expertise i wouldn't have to study for physics in my o levels i got a a star and eventually right before covid i mean um it was it was very clear that my family could not help me complete my uh, university financially and i was kind of taking up more responsibility i was like you know what i'm going to just shift and i had an opportunity in a media firm and i joined this media firm spent 10 months there and i fell in love i was like okay and now when it comes to the content aspect i was always already now that i look back i was making videos i was making funny videos with friends i was making funny videos on twitter on snapchat and when i entered this media firm i saw a gap in the market and it was actually one of my clients that approached me and they said hey i see you do tiktoks for yourself why don't you come make tiktoks for us it's like what you want me to act like a clown on your page is that what because i would i would do the most weirdest stuff on my page and he's like yeah just just come do it just just figure it out i i tried it i took the opportunity i didn't care about what the money was and our 27th video, which was the first time ever we were doing TikToks for someone else, the 27th one got 7 million views. Wow, how? That what was happened? game that was game changing. I don't know. I don't know. No, but share I'll tell you I'll tell you the video. Yeah, yes, please. I, yeah. The video was of a bathtub which has a jacuzzi bubbles coming out of it. You can go check it out. It's on Casa Milano UAE. Yeah. It's pinned at 7.7 million views. So we just I kind of just timed the music beat drop. Yeah. to when the bubbles come out of the base of the bathtub. And I and at 7 a.m. the next day, the owner of Casa Milano messages this guy, bro, the video's on 4 million views. I'm like, what? I look back and I think it's because we were just kind of throwing darts in the blank and kind of testing everything that we kind of understood about TikTok. And this is 2020. And so when that video went viral, that was our first success data point. And so from there, I replicated that video multiple times and right. I got 500K, I got 1 million, I got uh, 700,000. And I kind of saw that even today, if I make something similar to that on that page, it gets views, but nothing else works. So that became a niche for that page. I guess the how is I tried 27 different videos right. and also in 2020, there weren't many people doing TikTok in the UAE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you have this supply and demand on TikTok, which is, if there's less supply of a niche there's and you figure out that there's demand for it it's like you've hit gold you struck gold go crazy is this now oversaturated what do you think certain niches are oversaturated like what real like- estate brokers are you trying to say I've, I've seen you so many times yeah. helping them by the way and this whole thing with the money yeah <laughs> i've i've and now i tell every time i get a real estate client I go like we cannot do real estate content Unfortunately, yeah. if, if you're a user on TikTok today and you open TikTok and you start scrolling and you see a real estate ad, you will skip it Yeah. because you've seen so many. Annoyed, so yeah. instead of talking about real estate, talk about makeup, if you like makeup, talk True. about gymming, talk about, I don't know, talk about whatever you like talking about and link it to real estate. Yeah. Right. 
there are a lot of real estate experts and I feel like it's oversaturated in Dubai now. Yeah. yeah. Do you have to come up with the ideas for your clients now to go viral? In what works? So okay, this is, what is still a yeah. thing? So this is always an expectation when we sign up a client that you're going to make the scripts, you're going to direct us. And it's more of a 50-50 collaboration between us and the client. What we do is we sort of direct the client. If, I, if you're the real estate broker, if you're the co-founder of the company, we're going to ask you certain questions that we've kind of now understood that we need to ask if we want to get to know the person and how, how, they, how to represent them on camera. And um, the client in these brainstorming or these conversations will say stuff that becomes our key, um, key words for yeah. the videos. Yeah. Like I remember this one time, um, I just kind of asked this, the co-founder of Brands was like, who are you and what do you do? And he's like, I'm the co-founder of Brands for Less. I've been working, uh, I've been working on this for 25 years. I'm from Lebanon. He's like, okay, you know what? Say that on camera. 1.1 million views. The key over there was that he's been working on this for 25 years. Okay. How often do you scroll on TikTok and you see someone talking about something they've worked on in 25 years? How do you catch those things? How do you find those things that will definitely get popular? So, do you test? Is it a, a lot of testing. We've done maybe over 30,000 pieces of short form. I'm testing on my own page. 24-7, I'm testing on my clients' pages. When a client signs up, I give zero guarantee of virality. I tell them, you're going to pay me probably a big portion of your bank, but there's no promise it'll go viral. You might even not get 100 views. If you're okay with that, let's start. If you're not, it's best we stop right here. This is because nobody can guarantee virality. Nobody can guarantee how a billion users that are consuming content on TikTok are going to react at any given point of time. I don't know what your mood is or what their mood is when they're scrolling on TikTok at 3 p.m. So how is 3 p.m. a good time to post? There is no good time to post. There is no formula. There is an understanding of audience behavior, which you get by posting. And it's not that you have to post a lot. I think if you, if you just kind of post quality and very targeted pieces of content, you can eventually get an understanding of how that works. Interesting. Uh, I wanted to ask you, so is there a formula of how long a TikTok or a reel should be? So they always say don't cross, you know, like they used to say don't do more than 30 seconds to 60 seconds. But now there's their like TikTok is pushing longer videos. In my opinion, um, there is, again, no uh, formula because on my page, a 15 second video could get 7 million views, but on another page, a one minute, five second video could get 10 million views as well. Yeah. And I've seen that. So it's so random and I don't have enough data to kind of go like, okay, these, these long videos will give you this result. But what I do know is that in terms of what likely will succeed is if it is in some way or the other unique to other pieces of content and also kind of relating to the to the local audience because TikTok is pushing locally right first yeah then internationally do you do in arabic as well yeah so i have my business partner muhammad majdi he is sudanese originally and he speaks fluent arabic and yeah. different dialects so when it, when we have arabic clients he steps in i can understand arabic as well and i've been in situations where i, I don't even i don't even know what they're saying but just by their energy i'll guide them and it work because i know what i want them to say I think energy is the secret for sure. Yeah. But I want to ask, do you see that, let's say, the Arabic content uh, or Arabic first content goes uh, a bit more popular in the region? 100%. Because what, what you're seeing again is what I spoke about before is supply and demand. The supply of good Arabic content creators in the educational world is not as strong comparatively. Yeah. You That's have maybe a hundred English real estate brokers and maybe 20 Arabic good real estate brokers. And what we've done is we've actually tested this with Realtor on a Harley. You can go check him up. He's Zuhaib. He was for one of the first brokers who came onto this. We made an Arabic page. He doesn't speak Arabic. Yeah. We call it Realtor on a Harley.ae. And we made him speak Arabic. So Majdi would, my partner would read a line of Arabic and he would say it and yeah. then cut and then say it and then cut. Wow. And we made like 20, 15 or 10 videos and he, he did cross 10, 5 million views on a post and it was pretty much viral across. The challenge, however, is to get him to speak Arabic. And that, that, that can be challenging. We're not like translators or tutors on how to speak the language. But like when I work, I work in Qatar. 
it's brilliant. Like one of my clients managed to almost get a hundred thousand followers, and all they talk about is making these. Uh, they call them pergolas. They put them outside the villa. It's like a majlis, and they do it in Arabic. Right. And it goes super viral. Say, at, uh, I also I was going to ask, like, what can you potential when we're talking about the length of the reel or the TikTok? What can you potentially say within 15, 30 seconds? That say or do within 15, 30 seconds that can make a video go viral? What can you, like a few examples? What can you do that is really cool? All right. So before I give you the examples, I want to always put this out there. When you're scrolling on the platform, what do you like? Ask yourself, what do you hit like on, and what gets you to comment? When you get that personal uh, preference locked in and you understand how that content is made that gives you inspiration to create content for others and that's kind of what I did for most of the content that I've done I understood what I enjoyed in humor which was satire which was parodies yeah, yeah, which yeah. was just kind of if you would say taking the piss out of people you know but, I saw a couple of things that you're yeah. doing, like you, you're calling a guy and you're saying something. You, yeah, you, so that's Dave you, Ramsey. I'm, I'm parodying the financial guru, Dave Ramsey. <laughs> I've seen it, I, I watch a lot of his content, and then I was like, okay, I'm going to do the exact same thing, but as a joke. Yeah. Right? And it worked. Like, it was a long video, by the way. It was a minute and 32 seconds long. Like, and you it, broke up with a girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, so, what happened? Yeah. Right? I, Laughed. Yeah. Honestly, it was hilarious. But you see, with a serious face. You love this piece of content comparatively. It didn't go as viral on uh, as. But per I did love it. Yes. There you go. So, so th that's what you need to keep testing. You need to keep trying. And now, examples of what could go viral, what you could try, in your niche. I mean, um, in Dubai, it's like the trend these days that I see is anything. Like Dubai has an app for everything. We tested this with so many people. Always works. Well, how do you? How do you catch those trends? Where so, do you get so them? the Dubai has an app for everything was first yeah. done with Tony, Tony A, uh, who, who is an entrepreneur. Um, you might have seen his videos. So we were doing videos with him, and he said it in a podcast because he was talking about app development, just randomly. We posted that video, got three hundred thousand views. Where he spoke about Dubai as an app for everything, noon, Talabad, so and so. I took that same video, and I tried it with another client who is an app. They're an app that picks up vehicles, drops them to other locations, like a recovery truck. Got 400,000 views. Tried it with Tofik Raidi, co-founder of Brands for Less. Plugged in Brands for Less app, got 300,000 views. Tried it with Realtor on a Harley, got 700,000 views. And this is on one platform. On Instagram, it also gets that much reach. And now you know that if you say Dubai has an app for everything, it'll most likely perform. It's just whether your page will react to it or not, whether the audience that you have will react yeah, to yeah, it or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. No, that, I think that is super, super interesting. So, and you do not have your own podcast yet. In fact, uh, as we're speaking, I have officially recorded three um, full podcasts. I am developing, finally, in 2024, my own podcast. It's going to be unique. It's going to be different. My whole fear always has been of doing something that everyone else is doing. And so that's why I did parodies in the beginning. But now this year I am focusing because what I got as feedback over the last six months is that you do so much in the educational side and nobody knows about it. There's so much knowledge to put out there. So I'm bringing people who are not influencers, who are not, um, I would say, already on social media, but they are experts of their own field, like my barber. Yeah. This guy's been cutting hair for 10 years. Yeah. I want to know how he made the straight lines, <laughs> right? So that's the kind of things that I'm bringing up and um, it's going to be out on my YouTube very soon. That's that's cool. Yeah. No, I think that is very, very cool. But I think we do need to continue the conversation about, you know, how to go viral, whether to go viral or mm, it's more about staying authentic and, you know, uh, get things like what you I'll really break it, like. I'll yeah. break it in three steps. And step number one, make sure it's frictionless and you like doing it. All right. If you don't like doing it, you will burn out. Doesn't matter if you go viral. Step number two, analyze, research. Analyze your own content, research other people's content in your industry, and experiment. Step number three, go viral. Which is, if you do the first two steps, you will potentially, with a 99% success rate, because nothing's guaranteed, you could die tomorrow. But like, you will potentially always go viral, because if you have good energy, which is from step number one, which is like, you like doing it, step number two will just feed into step number one, and that's what people like consuming. 
good stuff. Yep. Thank you so much, Farhad. It was lovely, lovely catching you, yes. literally catching Farhad yeah. when he was passing by. No problem. Whenever I was trying to reach out to him as a speaker at a step conference, he never replied. I'm whenever sorry. I sent him an, e uh, an email, a message on LinkedIn or Instagram, he never replied. You know why? Because he was doing viral videos for his clients. I, I have I have a I have a very hectic schedule. You should see my vlogs. I wake up, I film, I edit, and now I'm editing the vlogs as well, and I fall asleep. <laughs> so that's how it's pretty it is, much right? it is. Thank you so, so much.